Hey everyone, I'm here with Dan Gittler, who is a program manager on Connected Field Service. And today we want to talk about how to register devices in Connected Field Service to use during the work order process. So uh, the device, if you think about industrial IoT, where you have some piece of machinery, which we would call the asset that you maybe installed or maybe you're just a service provider. Um, on these assets, there are small, whether it's a chip or there's other technologies that basically will emit signals, IoT signals. And so that physical device that is responsible for um, sending the signals is what we generally refer to as an IoT device. So potentially you could even have one asset that has several different devices sending different types of telemetry. So there's a couple of things that are important from a field technician standpoint. So number one, a field technician may be either installing a brand new asset in which they need to, you know, maybe it comes with um, embedded IoT in that asset to begin with, but as they install it and they connect it to whatever network and protocol they're using to send those signals up to the cloud, they need to actually register that as part of the installation process. That's one flow. The other possibility is that there's a new project where you're going to go out and you're going to instrument existing assets with IoT signals. So in that case, the asset might exist, but you need to actually go ahead and install and register the actual uh, device sending the signals. And the third one is when you've already had it instrumented previously, but now what you need to do is when you're on site, you might want to leverage those signals and leverage that IoT data to help you make the right decisions as a technician when you're providing service. So the last part of it would be more about leveraging what was already registered and, and using those IoT signals to, to perform the best service you can. Let's start with the scenario that you're actually, let's say, manufacturing or you're installing the necessary firmware on your IoT chips. Um, beforehand. So what you might do is you might have some portal or you might do it with an IoT of itself where you're going to go ahead and within IoT Hub, I'm going to use an example, your devices may be created first. And so we're just going to go through a manual step over here and just create one. So let's just call the ID um, AC unit one, two, three. We'll make that the device ID. You kind of uh, set up other information. That's great. Save. So the point is your devices may first be created in your IoT provider. In this case, we're using IoT Hub. And then what you can do to ensure that they show up in field service when you need it is you can jump over here to your devices and there's a button right now, this is functioning with Azure IoT Hub, where you would click on this import device button. And what you see now is that there's 18 devices. So it will check and see, okay, are there any additional devices on the back end and the IoT provider which have been created but have not yet actually been um, created? So they've been created in the IoT provider, but they have not yet been created within Dynamics and then connected field service. So the import will basically bring in all of those devices and create the respective records. And so now you can see, um, nine, you can see that there's 19 over here on the bottom. And what you'll also see is the, the, the device that was created most recently, so let's just sort over here, is AC Unit 123, which came in from, the IOT, from your IoT backend. And in this case, since you've already done performed the process of creating that in IoT Hub, as it comes in, it's already been registered. So as it creates a device, it makes sure that uh, it connects it up and it's considered in the state of registered. So that's one path that you can go down to get an IoT device registered. So the other path here is that I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create um, another device directly from here that's not yet been added to your IoT provider, in this case, IoT Hub. If I do, in fact, have a um, device ID that I can enter, then great. If not, I can just go ahead and I can save this. So after creating the device, what I have to do next is I have to actually register it. And so when I click this register button, it'll push this device to the IoT backend, in this case, IoT Hub. And if I had a device ID and the device ID existed already, it knows not to create anything new. If it's empty or if I created a unique one, then it'll either use that ID in creation, or if it's empty, it'll create that ID in Azure IoT Hub, and then it'll bring back the ID so these two are connected moving forward. So now that I've created it and I went ahead and registered it, if I go back into IoT Hub, I can see the new device that was created right over here. And if I jump back to my device, 
and I refresh my screen, I can see that device ID got passed back down. So moving forward, even if I tried to register this, wouldn't, nothing would happen. And this is how we communicate back and forth as data gets pulled, and we'll talk about that in another topic. The next step is now connecting it up to the asset so that you can actually understand what signals relate to which asset. So if I go over here to my asset table, there's a couple of ways you can do it. This is uh, the, the cleanest way, but let's say I'll just create a new asset over here. And this is the asset itself. Fill in all the information, save. And there's a button over here that says connect device. So what I can do from the actual asset is I can click connect device. I jump down here, I can see that new IoT device that I configured, click OK. And as I go ahead and do that, it creates a connection uh, to that device and as well as to the asset. And if I had multiple devices I wanted to register, I, could, I wanted to connect to the asset, I can do that as well. And as that data starts streaming in, we would see information about the device readings and, and other key information. So since I've now connected it, you'll see these tabs start showing up such as uh, information that's IoT related, and I would be able to add any information about properties that are reported, as well as my device readings tabs, which will show that live data. Um, the one other path you could have taken to begin with is as I create a, a brand new asset over here, so let's say AC unit 456, what you'll notice on top as well is I have the ability to just click register devices right from here. So at this point, if I do have the device ID, then I could have entered this device ID here, or again, I can leave it blank. And when I click on register, it'll actually go ahead and um, register any devices that have already been connected, or it'll go ahead and it'll say, okay, if there are no devices at all for this asset, then that's where it'll create a device for this asset in the same way that beforehand we said new device and then we hit register. So even if it doesn't exist quite yet, um, in your IoT provider, just by going to the asset, you can enter in the device ID, you can click on register devices, and that's another path you can take, which will actually create that device um, in the IoT backend. So as I jump in over here, if I refresh this, you can see eight, and now you'll see ninth one. So if an IoT alert comes in, but that alert that streams in, you don't have that device created in connected field service yet. So naturally, if an alert comes in from your IoT backend, it's tied to a device. And so as that alert comes in and the device ID gets passed in, if there is no device that exists with that ID, we'll go ahead and create that device record for you automatically. If you go back to that asset screen a moment ago, there's uh, using the connections entity. So on the asset itself, I can jump down here and I can see connections. And by default, when you hit the register button, it would create one. But if you had multiples, I can add additional connections, which will go through the, the connection entity itself. So what I can do is I can, the easier way is on the asset form to click the connect device button. And now I can choose a second or third the IoT device to connect up to this asset. And so the signals will all be related to that asset as you get alerts, or if you want to view live readings, you have the choice of, of picking which of those IoT devices you want to see the live telemetry stream from using the device readings tab.